Hello, my dear children. Uh, now let us start with the MCQ tips of the organic chemistry. Today I am going to start with the organic chemistry with some MCQ tips. Uh, this is my first lecture of organic chemistry regarding MCQ tips. And the topic that we will cover today is a general organic chemistry. We will start today. It will take some days to complete general organic chemistry and the types of organic reactions. General organic chemistry is linked with class 11th from where you started with all studying of organic compound and the types of the reaction, the reaction that I will take today is a substitution reaction that covered in uh, class 12th, the chapter 1, hello Kane and hello Ali. So, uh, so I will take only the MCQ tips with one or two questions of MCQ. After that you can join me on the telegram where I am going to send some uh, daily, daily I will send you some MCQ question, MCQ type questions and then you can uh, attend my session. Let me start. Uh, first of all, write down general organic chemistry. General organic chemistry. It's, it's a chemistry linked with the hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is a compounds of carbon and hydrogen. You know the first organic compound appeared in the lab was urea. First organic compound appeared in the lab was urea. Each and everything you kindly note down because it is just very very important MCQ tips of organic chemistry complete. It is prepared by heating ammonium cyanate NH4CNO ammonium ammonium cyanate cyanate prepared by scientist Waller W O H L A R. So it's the first organic compound prepared in the lab. And after that, the second organic compound prepared in the lab from the element carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen was acetic acid. Acetic acid was. It was the second organic compound by prepared by Cobes, Q N B E, acetic acid from the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So these are the two organic compounds firstly prepared in the lab. After that, millions of organic compounds prepared in the lab. Now, organic compounds are found in the plants and the animals, but inorganic compounds are found in the rocks and minerals. The difference between organic and inorganic compound. It from, obtained from plants and animals, organic compound, obtained from rocks and minerals are inorganic compound. Now, we are going to start organic compound. You know, in organic compound, there are the alkane, alkene, alkynes starting from this after that there are many of the function groups now any of the hydrocarbon represented by 2d formula like methane you can represent methane by two dimensional formula or it is represented by by the 3d formula where you will show the wedge like diagram and daughter diagram mm -hmm. there are two bonds one is wedge type bond or this is daughter bond 3d formula in the 3D formula, wedge bond means it is to pointing towards observer and dashed bond means it is pointing away from the observer. So you can draw the hydrocarbon diagrams in two ways, in a 2D, in 3D. In 3D, there are two types of bond, wedge type bond uh, representing towards observer and dashed bond representing away from the observer. Okay. Each and everything, please note down on your notebook along with my lecture. Now, after that, no, I'm taking no, first. After that, I'm taking what is meant by saturated and unsaturated compound. You know, saturated compound is that where there is presence of carbon, carbon single bond, and unsaturated where there is presence of double and triple bond. This is saturated and unsaturated compounds. Only the double and triple bond present between the carbon carbon, not between carbon and oxygen. So I'm taking one MCQ, question number one, identify saturated and unsaturated from the following. Right on. The first question, identify saturated and unsaturated from the following. I'm taking first is CH2 double bond CH2. I'm just starting from the basics. And the second is CH3 single bond COH double bond O. The third is third is CH2 
डबल बॉन्ड सी एच सिंगल बॉन्ड सी ट्रिपल बॉन्ड एन सो नाउ यूर चिल्ड्रन वेन देर इज ए डबल बॉन्ड बिटवीन द कार्बन देन ओनली देन यू विल कॉल इट इज ए अनसेचुरेटेड सो मार्क इट इज ए अनसेचुरेटेड बट देर इज ए डबल बॉन्ड बिटवीन कार्बन एंड ऑक्सीजन सो इट इज ए सेचुरेटेड इट्स नॉट अनसेचुरेटेड नेवर कंसिडर सो कि डबल बॉन्ड इज प्रेजेंट इज अनसेचुरेटेड ट्रिपल बॉन्ड प्रेजेंट इज अनसेचुरेटेड नो इफ डबल एंड ट्रिपल प्रेजेंट ओनली बिटवीन द कार्बन ओनली देन विल कॉल इट इज अनसेचुरेटेड so it is saturated there is a double bond between the carbon again it is a unsaturated but it is saturated because the double bond is present between carbon and oxygen so i'm taking more if the question comes like that ch3 c triple bond and then again it is saturated why because there is a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen so i think the first mcq tip is very much clear so on saturated and unsaturated next is next is planar and non planar how to how would you identify planar and non planar the hydrocarbon is planar or non planar the non planar is only then when there is a sp3 carbon comes when there is a sp2 and sp carbon comes you will call it a planar so i'm taking again second mcq identify is it planar or a non planar compound and i don't the first is CH2 double bond CH2 where there is a double bond you know it's sp2 hybridized so you yeah, i write out it's a planar compound planar it is because it's a double bond and the double bond carrying carbon is sp2 hybridized now i'm taking CH2 double bond CH single bond C triple bond CH again it is double means sp2 it is again sp2 a triple means sp and sp again if you write it is a planar compound so planar is that where there is a sp2 or sp presence now i'm taking a third is third is ch3 single bond ch3 single bond ch double bond ch2 yeah it is sp2 is sp2 but it is sp3 because of the presence of just one sp3 in the compound makes the compound non planar So rather it is a non-planar. So planar are only those where there is a only those where there is a all are sp or all are sp two. But if one of the carbon is sp three, we will call it is always non-planar. Okay. Now I'm taking more. You write CH three, CH three, CH two double bond, CH single bond, CH double bond, CH single bond, CH double bond, CH two. This is, this is sp2 again it is sp2 it is sp it is sp it is sp2 and it is sp2 all are either sp2 or sp so it is a planar compound benzene again benzene in benzene each carbon is sp2 so benzene is a planar molecule i think now you came to know about two mcq so what is meant by A saturated and unsaturated planar and non-planar. Third point, write a third journal of from the topic journal of organic chemistry. The third is identify the primary, secondary, and tertiary carbon. In alkane, primary is a CH3, secondary is a CH2, and uh, tertiary is a CH. In alkane only, there is a primary, it is secondary, it is tertiary. But when it is linked to some function group. Then primary is CH2, secondary is CH, and tertiary is just C. So the primary it is secondary, it is tertiary. No doubt. In alkane only, primary is CH3, secondary is CH2, tertiary is CH. But in some function group, like double bond, triple bond, or some other function groups comes, then primary is CH2, secondary is CH, and tertiary is C. So I'm taking a third MCQ. Okay, now I'm taking third is count how many primary carbon, secondary carbon, extra. I'm taking CH3, CH2, CH3. It's simple alkane, so it's a primary. It is a secondary. It is a primary. CH3 primary, CH2 secondary, CH tertiary. So how many primary carbon? There are two primary carbon. There are two primary carbon, but three plus three six. There are six primary hydrogen. Two primary carbon and six primary hydrogen. 
forming the secondary carbon. Secondary carbon is just one and secondary hydrogen is two. So this is secondary carbon and secondary hydrogen. I'm taking one more example. Now I'm taking your CH3, CH3, CH double bond, CH2. The double bond comes. When the double bond comes, then your CH2 is primary, CH is secondary, and this is also primary. No, this is primary, no, it is primary, it is secondary. How many primary carbon? There are two primary carbon. There are three plus two, there are five primary hydrogen. There is a one secondary carbon and there is a one secondary hydrogen. I think it is clear. Primary carbon two, primary hydrogen three plus two, five. Secondary carbon one, secondary hydrogen is also one. Now I'm taking more with the function group. CH3, C double bond, with acid it is, acid. So let us start. How many primary carbon? So this is your, this is your primary, this is your function group. This is your primary carbon. So primary carbon means, what is this? This is your function group. In this function of the carbon, we have four bonds. So again, it is sp3. This is also sp3. So how many sp3 carbon? There are two carbon are sp3 and three. This is not any hydrogen because it is not linked with carbon. And three hydrogen. So three hydrogen are again primary. Two carbon. There are two carbon that are primary. It's sp3. It's a primary. So two carbon are primary and three hydrogen are primary. No hydrogen is secondary. So write down primary carbon two, primary hydrogen three, and uh, no secondary. So it is uh, it is your no, uh, asking about this primary and secondary. So primary carbon. This is primary carbon. This is primary carbon. Okay. Now I'm taking one more. Taking more CH3, CH3, CH, CH3, CH3. So all are primary, no double, this is all primary, CH3 primary, CH3 primary, CH3 primary, CH2 secondary, and CH is tertiary. Because it is alkene, so CH is tertiary. How many primary carbon? 1, 2, 3. Right on the 3 primary carbon. How many primary hydrogen? 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9. There are 9 primary hydrogen. How many tertiary? Because it is your 1, 2, 3, 4. It is your CH because in alkane CH3 primary, CH2 secondary, and CH tertiary. No secondary carbon. Tertiary carbon is 1, and tertiary hydrogen is also 1. So now you can start with the there is okay, there is no secondary carbon, no secondary hydrogen, but tertiary. I think it is very much clear. Again, take your conclusion. I have completed three topics. How many you identify? Again, let, let me repeat. How many you identify? Saturated and unsaturated. When a double bond and triple bond is present between the carbon, only then you will call unsaturated, right? But if the double bond is present between carbon and some other element, we will call it saturated. Saturated. Unsaturated, unsaturated. So first thing I share with you. Second. Second thing I share with you, how will you count planar and non-planar? If all the carbon, all the carbon are either sp3, uh, either sp2 or sp, either sp2 or sp, then it is your planar structure. But if one of the carbon, like one carbon is sp3 comes, then you call the same structure non-planar. Okay, the third was, third was, always remember CH3 primary, CH2 secondary and CH tertiary. And when function groups comes, then CH2 primary, CH secondary and C is tertiary. And the hydrogen attached with them is primary secondary tertiary. Three MCQ tips are given from general organic chemistry. Let us start with the counting right on fourth point. Counting sigma and pi bonds as well as how many bond angles. Let me start the fourth point from general organic chemistry counting sigma and pi bonds. Now I'm taking your question is you know sigma bond if there is a double one sigma one pi if there is a triple there is a one sigma and two pi and 
Now I'm, I'm going to start my question from the fourth MCQ tips. I know CH3 single bond, CH double bond, CH single bond, CH2 single bond, C triple bond, C single bond, CH3. Okay, now how many, how many is sigma, how many pi, and what's the bond angle? You know, when it is first, I'm taking the new thing is bond angle. You know, when it's a carbon with single bond, right now it is sp3, and this is your double, it is sp2, it is again double, sp2, single, sp3, triple surrounding sp, triple surrounding sp, and it is single sp3. I think you know in sp3 the angle is 109 degree, in sp2 the angle is 120 degree, in sp the angle is 180 degree. Now, always remember, you now this carbon bearing 6 angles of 109 degree, 6 angles. When sp3 comes, you write 6. It is a 6. When sp2, 3 bond angles will come, 3 bond angles will come, in sp just 1 and 1 and sp3, 6. Now write down how many angles are of 109 degree. 6 plus 6 plus 6. So what? It's 18. How many angles of 120 degree? 3 plus 3 is 6. And how many angles of 180 degree? And just 2. SP3, 6. SP2, 3. And SP is just 1. So now I think it's very simple to count sigma and pi bond. Just now. Because it is a, it's a new thing. Just very simple, you can, I am taking some small uh, compound of the uh, hydrocarbon, you got some little length it is, right down, I am taking your CH3, single bond C, triple bond N, how many sigma, how many pi, expand the structure, you can easily count them, it is sigma, it is sigma, it is sigma, it is sigma, 1, 2, 3, 4 sigma, and this sigma, there is a 5 sigma and rest 2 are pi. So there are 5 sigma and rest 2 are pi. Sigma and pi bond counting is quite simple. After that, I am taking your question right down. It is your SCH2, same, same how many bond angles and add, how many sigma bond. CH2, double bond, CH, single bond, CH, single bond, CH3, and it is C, triple bond, CH. Question is how many bond angles of 100 degree, how many bond angles of 120 degree, and how many bond angles of 180 degree. Double bond, double bond means it is sp2, double bond means it is sp2, single bond sp3, it is sp3, it is sp, it is again sp. Now you can count how many sp2, it is 3, sp2, 3, sp3, 6. SP3, 6, SP1, SP1. So how many 180 degree? 2, 120 degree. 120 degree is 3 plus 3, 6. And 109 degree, 6 plus 6. It is, it is 109 degree, 6 plus 6, it is 12. The answer is 12, 6 and 2. So you can easily attempt MCQ questions now. I think it is clear. Now this is, we have completed. Uh, now let us, one, one more ticking. Write down how many sigma and pi bonds in C2, Cn4. In C2, Cn4. C2, Cn4. Very important structure it is C2, Cn4. 1, 2, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, in Cl is a triple bond. You can write triple bond. Cyanide always carrying triple bond. So now you can easily count. How many sigma and pi? You can count sigma and pi. It is C2, C and 4. You can count sigma. It is 1 sigma, second sigma, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 sigma more. How many pi more? 2 pi, 2 plus 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 8, and 1, 9. So this means there is 9 sigma and 9 pi bonds. Then with that, you have completed the you are counting sigma bond, counting pi bond, and how many bond angles. So with that, we have completed uh, four topics from MCQ. Now I am taking one more. Write down fifth MCQ tip from the general organic chemistry. 
the fifth is the fifth is how many double bond how many triple bond and how many you write down double bond is also called olefinic bond olefinic bond and next your triple bond is called acetylenic bond acetylenic bond how many double bond how many triple bond how many olefinic bond and acetylenic bond i'm taking one example to count it write down ch2 it is your double bond it's your double bond ch or triple bond it is ch2 double bond ch single bond c double bond o ch2 c triple bond c ch2 and to c triple bond n c triple bond n the question is how many bonds are double how many bonds are triple you can notice there is a double bond one double bond two i know double bonds double bonds are two and triple bond is also two double and triple bond is two now write down what is meant by olefinic bond olefinic bond is that when the double bond is present between the carbon you can see between the carbon is a one double bond and this is a double bond between not carbon so it's not olefinic dear children it's not olefinic triple bond yeah this is triple bond between the carbon but this is not triple bond between the carbon so right in this structure olefinic bond is one and this is very important uh, for five points i have shared with you i think these are clear again i am repeating this completed today's lecture from general organic chemistry after that i am going to start types of the reactions uh, that will help you lot in chapter hello in and hello in so first chapter of class 12 Now what five MCQ tips I will share from the general organic chemistry? Counting sigma and pi bonds, counting angles 109 degree, 120 degree, 180 degree, counting primary carbon, counting secondary carbon and uh, tertiary carbon as well as primary secondary tertiary hydrogen. So identify the structure is planar or non-planar. How many double bond? How many triple bond? How many olefinic bond and how many acetylenic bond? And I think uh, these are five types of MCQ tips I have given to you. Kindly note each and every. Make a separate notebook. Make separate sheets. You prepare separate sheets. Prepare this. This is very very difficult topic. This will start. It is a general organic chemistry. It will make the basic of organic chemistry, basic foundation in your brain. So uh, always write in point wise. I have shared five MCQ tips with you from general organic chemistry, and the sixth MCQ tip I will share in my next visit. From these five MCQ tips, I will put some objective questions, but only on the. social media app that is on telegram you can please join me on the telegram you know my phone number you can join me on this uh, i am going to start uh, organic uh, uh, chemistry uh, hello again hello in and general organic chemistry mcq questions on the telegram now let us start i know the next topic is that we help pull in hello again and hello in okay i know types of organic reactions i'm going to complete one of the reaction today and daily i will take because it is very lengthy topic daily i will cover the first is substitution reactions addition reactions elimination reaction rearrangement reaction so daily i will take one substitution reaction is further of three types electrophilic substitution nucleophilic substitution free radical right of Free radical substitutions. So first, right? This is not the sixth. The first point. So types of, along with general organic chemistry, I will continue with the class twelfth even. It's a type of organic reaction. The first, I am going to start substitution reaction. I don't substitution reactions are of three types: electrophilic and free radical. I will take in my second lecture. And today, I am going to start nucleophilic substitution reaction. Right? Don't. nucleophilic substitution reactions are those where a stronger nucleophile replaces a weak nucleophile rx plus z arrow rz plus x 
a stronger nucleophile replaces a weak nucleophile. It's a nucleophilic substitution action. So now I'm going to give you a very, very important tip because a lot of question comes from this topic right on, on the top, nucleophilic substitution reactions, where a stronger nucleophile replaces a weak nucleophile. In my lectures, in previous lectures, I have discussed each and every reaction with you. You can uh, open uh, my video of where I have written chemical properties of haloalkane and haloal. You can see in detail of all the reaction I have given in that video lecture. I am taking types of what uh, uh, your nucleophile. How will you identify, dear children, how will you identify whom is X or whom is Z? That is, whom is strong nucleophile? is a weak nucleophile. The best way is very important tip. Right now. Living group. Living group. Living group here X. Okay. Living group. LG. Living group. Living group is directly proportional to stability of negative ion and inversely proportional to the basicity. Basic strength. Basic strength. That is basic strength. Now, better the living group, which one is a better living group? Only that one is a better living group, which is more basic. More better living group, inversely proportional. More basic is a better living group. Okay, stability of negative ion. More stable the ion is, it is better living group. So, right on, this is a very important tip. Now, coming to the basic strength and nucleophilic strength. Right on, BS for basic strength. NS for nucleophilic strength. Basic strength is that when electrons are donated towards H plus. Nucleophilic strength is that when electrons lone pair or negative ions, anything, it is not moving towards H plus other than H plus. Other than H plus. So I don't. Nucleophilic substitution actions where a strong nucleophile replaces a weak nucleophile. Uh, how will you identify which one is X and which one is Z? Today I will tell you why this tip. Better living group, living group only that one is better, which negative one is most stable and le less, that is inversely portion, less basic. Okay, now I am going to explain each and everything to you. Right on. Basic strength is that when electron moves towards H plus, nucleophilic strength is that when electron moves towards not towards H plus, but towards some other ion. Okay. Now I don't. There are memory map. Memory map. Making memory. Memory map. Making memory map. Group. Period. And in general. In general. In general, always remember nucleophilic strength and basic strength are same. Nucleophilic strength and basic strength are same in general as well as in, I am taking some question as well. So, uh, nucleophilic strength and basic strength are same. And after that you write, nucleophilic strength is always inversely proportional to electro negativity. Nucleophilic strength is inversely proportional to atomic size, right? But in a group, in a group there are two mediums, polar protic solvent, right? Polar protic solvent, polar or protic solvent. Polar protic means water, ethanol. Polar or protic means DMSO, DMSO that is acetone extra. It's a polar protic solvent and polar or protic solvent. In this also same, same. Here also nucleophilic strength and basic strength are same. So same it is. So these three are same. This, this and this. But in polar protic solvent, only in polar protic solvent, nucleophilic strength is inversely proportional to basic strength. In polar protic solvent, nucleophilic strength is inversely proportional to basic strength as well your nucleophilic strength is a directly proportional to the size and you know it is very important i'm taking no question so after that i'm taking questions 
So it's a very, very important thing. Nucleophilic substitutions, very strong nucleophile replaces a weak nucleophile. Which one will be the X? Which one will be the Z? That will be asked in your objective questions, that is in your exam, competitive exams. How to identify which one is X and which one is Z? Sooner you will came to know. Just write memory map, group period general. In a group, polar protic and polar oprotic will come. So you can write nucleophilic strength and the basic strength is same. And nucleophilic strength is inversely proportional to electronegativity and inversely proportional to the size in the last three general period and in polar. But in polar protic solvent, they are inversely proportional, polar, nucleophilic and basic. And nucleophilic strength is directly proportional to the size. Write down three, four questions based upon this memory map. Write down question number one. Question number one. Question number one is arrange, arrange F minus, Cl minus, Br minus, and I minus. These are all a nucleophile. Arrange all these nucleophile in a nucleophilic strength in the presence of water. In the presence of water. You know, water is a polar protic solvent. Answer. Array, write down question, arrange F minus, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus in a nucleophilic strength in the presence of water, that is, water, what is water? It is a polar protic solvent. And what I told you, in a polar protic solvent, nucleophilic strength is directly proportional to the size. Very important, very important thing, more the size, more the strength. So your answer is more the size, more the strength, two sizes greater. So it is I minus greater than Br minus, greater than Cl minus, greater than F minus. More the size, more the strength, nucleophilic strength. Okay, now write down question number two. Write down question number two. Same question, arrange F minus, Cl minus, Br minus in the presence of acetone. In the presence of acetone or it is your polar aprotic solvent. Now in polar aprotic solvent, nucleophilic strength is inversely proportional to size. Very simple. So less the size, less the size, that is F minus greater than C more than strength, Br minus and I minus. Nucleophilic strength. These two questions are the basics of this topic. Then I don't know question number three. Your question number three is now. Third question is I'm taking RBR. Question number three. I'm taking one reaction. Third question. It's RBR plus nucleophile and R nucleophile and Br one nucleophile replace the other. The question is what will be the nucleophile from the from the fast for the fastest reaction? What is A part? A part is OH minus B part is CH3O minus C part PH phenoxide ion PHO minus phenoxide ion it is methoxide ion hydroxide ion, D part, D part is your acetate ion, CH3, CO minus. Now dear children, write down a question and after that, the write down a question that they are asking. The question is, what will be the nucleophile out of ABCD? What will be the nucleophile which will make selection fastest? answer is what will be the nucleophile this make only that nucleophile makes action fast which one is a stronger so we have to identify out of ABCD which one is a stronger nucleophile you know nucleophile is stronger is only and I told you one tip living group LG LG living group is directly proportional to stability of negative ion is inversely proportional to the 
basic strength, basicity, basic, that is basic nature, nucleophilic strength, that is conjugate base, basic strength. So what? Now we want stronger nucleophile. And you know, stronger nucleophile is only that which, this is a stronger, stronger nucleophilic strength, which is least stable, least stable. Let me find which ion is a least stable ion. Out of this four, I will identify which negative ion is least stable. Stability of negative ion is inversely proportional to the nuclear strength. Less stable the ion is, more the nucleophilic strength. More the nucleophilic strength, faster will be the reaction. So let us find less stable negative ion. Less stable. Do you know? Less stable negative ion. All are sizes O, 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 O. Sizes same. Electronegativity is same. This means this funda will not work inversely proportional to size and inversely proportional to electronegativity. This funda will not work here because all ions are of minus O minus O minus. Size is same. Electronegativity is same. When the problem comes, uh, size of the ion is same, electronegativity is same, then we will check stability of the negative ion. Third funda. In the first case, you know, in this case, this negative charge is present upon two oxygen atom. When the negative charge is present, it's a most stable negative ion. Most stable negative ion. And in this negative charge is present on pH. pH is benzene, phenyl, on carbon. On carbon. Negative charge brings more stability when it is on highly electronegative atom that is oxygen. Here the negative charge, you can see the picture. CH3COO minus. Here the negative charge is present on oxygen. Here the negative charge is present on carbon. So I think this is the most stable. Up this is number one. This is number two, stability order. And out of this, this is number three. And this is the least stable ion. Why? It's the least stable. You can check. It's a plus sign effect showing. It's the least stable ion. It's plus sign. It has already negative ion. It, it is giving the electron. Intensify the negative charge on it. So least stable negative ion. Least stable negative ion means more strongest nucleophile. So B part is the right answer. It's the strongest nucleophile because it is the least stable negative ion. Why? As dear children, always remember, plus I effect decreases the stability of negative ion. Minus I effect increases the stability of negative ion. Plus I decreases the stability of negative ion. And minus I increases the stability of negative ion. Okay? So I think this question is clear. I'm giving one more. Fourth question. The fourth question is, now, what is the jet? Now, I'm writing R, C, O, jet. Now, I'm asking about jet. What is the jet from the following setup? Writing with complete reaction, R, C, O, jet plus nucleophile. The answer is nucleophile arrow. R, C, O, nucleophile and jet. The question is jet. That is a living group. Now, we have to identify which one is a living group out of A, B, C, D. A part is NH2, B part is ethoxy, A part is amine, B part is ethoxy, C part is your, again acetate, it is, it is your C, single bond O, double bond O, CH3CO acetate ion, and next is, CH3, fourth D part is, D part is C ions. So question is, out of these four, which one will be a jet? Living group. You know there is a funda. Living group is directly proportional to stability of negative ion as well directly inversely proportional to nucleophilic strength. And you know basic strength. That is basic, basic nature. Now dear children, now you can see living group. This is a living group. We have to identify which one is a better living group. 
the better living group is only that which is a weak nucleophilic, weak base, weakest nucleophile, and weakest nucleophile, the nucleophilic strength is inversely proportional to electronegativity. More the electronegativity, less the nucleophilicity. So more the electronegativity is just chlorine. It is, it is your nitrogen, it's oxygen. So chlorine atom is more electronegative. More electronegativity means nucleophilic strength is less. Nucleophilic strength means it's a better living group. So answer is you will see that minus. And when you will attempt few questions, identify nucleophile, identify jet, five, after attempting five, six questions, then this funda will get to you. This is the main funda of the chapter hello alkane and hello arene. So I am again repeating in hello alkane and hello arene, the only one reaction is very much popular, nucleophilic substitution action. When a stronger nucleophile replace the weak nucleophile. So in objective try questions generally comes, identify which one is jet, identify which one is nucleophile. So how will you identify jet? Better, jet is a living group. Better living group is only that which is the weakest nucleophile. And how will you identify the weakest nucleophile which is a greater size, size greater, Le more electronegativity, less than nucleophilicity. So answer is this, now I am taking more questions. More questions I will take on my social media that is on Telegram. I will put some questions here. So this is all about your memory map I have given. I think it's very much clear what is nucleophilic strength, what is basic strength and uh, what is the memory map, what is your, what is the one MCQ tip I have given. Living group is directly proportional to stability of negative ion, is inversely proportional to the basic strength of the conjugate base. Always remember, this is a very important tip of the Hanover Kane and Hanover Kane chapter. Living group is directly proportional to stability of negative ion is inversely proportional to basic strength that is basic strength of the conjugate base conjugate base basic strength basic strength and nucleophilic strength is same just in one case differ and that is a polar protic solvent okay uh, after that this topic will only then come then when you will do some questions because repetition will make some imperfect so now, dear children, nucleophilic substitution reactions are of two types, unimolecular and bimolecular reactions. You make a difference, very simple, because detail of SN1 and SN2, I have taken already in my topic, uh, that is chemical properties of halorecane and halorene. You can check from there, you can read from there. Now, you just try the very, very important points that will be helpful in solving MCQ, SN1, SN2. Try to, it's a unimolecular, it's a unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reactions. It's a bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. Try to make a differences. So differences between SN1 and SN2. Very important differences. These differences will cover all the points with you. First of all, write down mechanism. It is a two-step mechanism, Rx, just I am writing in a very small way, Rx, detail I have already done, Rx arrow, R plus, carbocation formed, after that Z comes, answer is R, Z or Z R. Retention as well as inversion, racemization takes place. Rx, where X is a living group, after that carbocation formed, after that Z comes and the answer is R Z or Z X. Detail of the mechanism, detail, complete detail of this mechanism you can check uh, by the video lecture that I have given to you by mechanism of SN1 and SN2. So now you can see there is a carbocation formation. So write down the intermediate, the intermediate of this reaction is a carbocation. Intermediate carbocation. Third write down rearrangement. Yes, it takes rearrangement also. There is ring expansion as we are shifting. Rearrangement takes place to make the carbocation more stable. But there is no rearrangement. There is one. Now you can check 
here it is your Dijon mnemonic correction. It started with just Rx minus x negative plus z negative. No need to write. No need to write. Detail you will take in class in your classes. It's a mechanism. It's an intermediate is carbocation. Yeah, here is a rearrangement takes place and now coming to this. In this case, there is just starting when your z comes with Rx. Intermediate form transition state. It is your jet R X. It's a it's a transition state. After that, the answer is jet R. So, my dear children, it is a bimolecular reaction. It was a unimolecular reaction. It molecular it just started with one molecule R X. We started with two molecule R X and J. So, it's a bimolecular reaction. And here, the intermediate is a transition state. Transition state, no carbocation formed, and there is no rearrangement. No rearrangement. No ring expansion takes place. Write down number four. Fourth difference between SN one and SN two. In this case, a Z weak nucleophile also work because here there is a push by the Z to the X, so some strong nucleophile required. A strong nucleophile required, very strong nucleophile required in a SN2 mechanism. And next is type of solvent. Here polar protic solvent required. Here polar aprotic solvent required. Polar protic solvent like water, HF, ethanol, alcohol. Here DMSO, DMF extra. Polar protic stereochemistry. About stereochemistry, stereochemistry. Here there is a racemization takes place. That is retention as well as inversion. And here there is just Walden inversion. W A L D E N. Just Walden inversion. That is your configuration get inverted. That's a book. Now after that number seven. Number seven is about the About the stability order in a cell one, the stability is benzyl or benzyl halide greater than allyl halide greater than tertiary, secondary, primary, and after that vinyl and aryl. In this case, the order is your primary greater than vice versa. Greater than secondary, it is just vice versa. Greater than allyl and benzyl, so it's benzyl carbocation is most stable. More the number of rings, more the stability of the carbocation. Next is kinetics. It's a first order, first order kinetics, and it's a second order kinetics. Here, E A one, because it's two step. E A two, first step is slow. Two step mechanism. Right on first step is slow, second is fast. It is just one step mechanism. E A one greater than E A two and K one less than K two. First step is slow. When activation energy is less, reaction is fast. So here E A one greater than E A two, but in this case it is your K one less than K two. First step. Now this is all about your SN one and SN two mechanism. All the questions will be quite simple. MCQ again I will take on when I will start solving MCQ. Now this is your SN one and SN two. I always remember your aryl halide, aryl halide, and vinyl halide. You know what is the vinyl? Vinyl when the when the halogen is linked to the carbon having double bond. These two aryl. And vinyl, vinyl. These two organic compounds very, very less reactive towards nucleophilic substitution action due to resonance stabilization. Because because of the resonance, it comes a double bond. In the same case, it comes a double bond. These two compounds never show nucleophilic substitution reaction. In detail, I will take in my detail lectures. So what I am showing you in your types of reaction. There are many types of reactions organic. 
substitutions, elimination, addition, rearrangement. I started today with just substitution. Substitutions are of three types. Electrophilic substitutions, I'll take in next lecture. Nucleophilic substitutions and free radical substitutions. Now today because your topic related with halon kin and halon ring, so I've chosen this. Nucleophilic substitution reaction. Very, very important memory map and is it memory there is a very important mcq tip that i have shared with you and from that so many questions set up in competitive exams after that substitution actions of two types sn1 and sn2 sn1 required polar protic solvent sn1 is a two step mechanism it is bimolecular it is your first order it's it's unimolecular it's first order kinetics here the first step is slow second step is fast why the first step is slow because the, there is a carbocation form and you know the rate determining step is always the slowest step here stability order will come in the exams that uh, i will tell you each and everything in my objective question so with that i have completed my lecture today what i shared with you i parallel i have started two things one is general organic chemistry because a general organic chemistry was in class 11th so to make the foundation strong i started also with general organic chemistry along with some syllabus of class 12th so started with the types of the reactions okay so this is all about uh, you make the notes about your general organic chemistry separate make two notebooks general organic chemistry is separate and your others second half of the organic chemistry in the second notebook after that when you will start solving your questions you please keep in front of you know, those these few notes and no problem will come during solving mcq i will send you my mcq questions in this we are after in this also as well i started solving all mcq in my social media app in our social media app that is telegram you may join telegram okay thank you